Welcome back, everyone. It appears that we have got a series on our hands. BLG, the Miracle Makers, the Hail Mary team, have just taken game three with match point on the line. Now, Rogue Warriors are still one nexus away from winning the series and advancing to the semifinals to play Edward Gaming. But BLG have now got some wind under their wings. Amazing J is ready for business yeah. in this series. And we've seen the rookies from BLG step up in that last game. It's not just Amazing J, Jin Zhao, and Road. This is a cohesive five-man lineup. I, look, I'll be honest with you. I didn't expect to have a series after the first two games. I thought it was all over. I had a feeling that Rogue Warriors would just be able to bring it home and get us the 3-0. I was pleasantly proven wrong yeah. by the way that BLG did play in that third game. But I also think we have to caveat this above all else with the fact that I mean, Rogue Warriors just picked their five regular champions and tried to style on their opponents. They didn't draft for the draft phase, they drafted for themselves. Yes. And they thought that maybe they'd still be able to do it, you know, get to that late game and just be signature Rogue Warriors. They were proven very wrong. Oh yeah. So coming into the fourth game, the expectations have to shift from them. Backstage should have been a very stern talking to and say, it's all business now, your draft needs to still deny things from some of their players that are incredibly powerful. And the first one that comes to mind is Mole on the Zoe. I think we absolutely have to echo what the desk said, that perhaps it could have been a bit of hubris from Rogue Warriors. And as we get into this next draft, this is Rogue Warriors on blue side. We'll see if their pick and ban changes to cover that hubris, as they will uh, now be going up against BLG. That is starting to get some speed in this matchup. But as we load in, Rusty, this could be it. We've already mentioned it once. Now, Kaisa is again banned away. Oh my god, and what? there's yes. no Zoni and Sejuani it locked exists. in. Sejuani's a champion <laughs> again. He's been talking about it the whole time, folks. Whoever picks Sejuani first wins. That was what I was saying to myself. I'm just <laughs> I'm so glad that someone's... It's not Lee Sin. Anyway, we're actually in the draft and the Sejuani has been prioritized. It's just super important to have a tank that can engage from range. It helps the composition so much especially if you're going to run something like the Cogmore composition, have more merit with engaging for it. Well, we've got the Zaya locked in for Jin Zhao. Chieftain, his Rek'Sai is still available, but so too is his Skarner. And you can see his coach just behind him trying to provide direction. BLG is a team that is capable of making something out of nothing. The miracle run into playoffs into Worlds 2016, we all remember. And that was Jin Zhao Road and Amazing J. But the interesting thing here is that there is a Rakan to be picked by Rogue Warriors if they choose to do so. Now, I would not actually expect that they do unless they want to show a lot of respect to Road. Road individually has started to really warm up in this series. His engages in game two were fantastic. In game one, he was still mechanically hitting the bindings. But past that, I'd say I, I wouldn't expect once again that the respect would be paid by Rogue Warriors to ruin their own composition to take it from yeah. them. But I do think that giving him Rakan could be a risk. And we do see the priority Jin, Tom, Kench, Orn for the first time in the matchup goes through to BLG. This comp is looking stronger and stronger as time goes on. Rogue Warriors, they've seen this composition before. They've had to have seen this composition before from BLG. They seem to be getting what they want, but is what they want enough to deal with this long-range fight engage mm. from BLG? Yeah, this is really interesting, actually, coming into the second ban phase. Rogue Warriors could very easily ban out the Rakan. But then the second point for me is, what else do you actually remove? Do you show credit where it's due to Mole's performance? On the Zoe, do you remove the Zoe? Or do you actually decide that, you know what, instead we go, like, Morgana? and we get rid of some of the things that the composition of Rogue Warriors don't want to have denying them. You know, a Sejuani range engage, well, Morgana's good into that. A single target focus from a Tom Kench and a Jin as well. <laughs> Mole just bottoms up on the rest of his coffee to finish off and prepared. Sorry, that was Chieftain. And now looking at this next round, Scion banned away from Rogue Warriors. We're still looking at Mouse and Doinby for the final two of the Rogue Warriors and Thresh is going to be banned away from Road here. So they are getting rid of that LCK style composition, the one that we saw just two days ago, which BLG used to beat JD in game one. Yeah, we saw the BL Griffin. It was actually very strong from them, but at the same time, you have to remember that they haven't gone towards any mid lane bans. They've chosen not to focus that at all. In fact, Rise was banned by BLG only for the opposite side when you look at that middle lane. Everything's available, everything's an opportunity. And both seem to have a wealth of strong champions for exactly that. However, BLG get the last pick for mid. 
That's Counterpick going to Mole in the mid lane against Doinby. Now, Doinby's Cassiopeia is still open. His Karma is still open. There are plenty of champions that he can play here. We know he's got a massive champion pool, but Gnar locked in for Mouse. It does need to deal damage whatever Doin B picks. So I do actually like the Cassiopeia that you bring up as well, especially against the Skarner and an Orn if you're looking to kite them away. But at the same time, this is an option for the team composition. It still does damage. He was building the death caps as you would expect. He's locked in the Galio for the second time. Team fighting, 5v5. SMLZ is not going to be in the front lines this time. Absolutely not. Well, at least that's the hope. When there's a Skarner and a Braum on the team, it's going to be real tough for him not to be. Of course, we'll have to see how Chieftain uses these Impales. Mole looking for this counter pick into the mid lane. Knows he's up against Galio. Will take Swain into the mid lane to answer Doinby's Galio. And with that, we've got our comps once again. And this is Rogue Warriors trying to finish this series off. They just lost game three. There's always that seed of doubt, that tiny voice in the back of their heads, perhaps bringing into question everything else. How well can the coaching staff from Rogue Warriors recover and adapt? I mean, I always think about it like this, right? You can go 2-0, you can try and be cocky or have some hubris with your picks. Whatever it is, you've lost game number three, and that's fine. Normally, you'd be like, all right, we come in game four. It's all battle stations, you know, all serious, ready to go, get that win. But you give BLG momentum, You've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's always the risk coming into this fourth game. They've got one now on the board. You can feel the comeback starting every yeah. time BLG get even the smallest <laughs> amount of momentum. And they have got it. Mole is here to play. The mechanics have started to warm up. You can't help but feel like this game really does shift the balance of BLG. If they come in strong, I don't know what stops them. Well... Hopefully that'll be up to the coach of Rogue Warriors to get them back on track should we go to a game five, but we're not there just yet. We've got to turn our attention to SMLZ and Jin Zhao, the two hyper carries, the sniper versus Jin Zhao trying to battle back in this quarterfinal match. Still, match point for Rogue Warriors. One single win, and they close this series out and advance, but now they've got to do it against BLG. That's starting to gather some speed as they roll down the mountain and make their way towards victory. One more win and you'll be able to secure yourself a spot in Rift Rivals as well, not mm. just the semifinals, but an international berth. It's coming into this fourth game. It's a pretty strong Wombo style of composition from Rogue Warriors. They're set to team fight. They're looking to team fight. Now they're feeling the BLG. You can see it on your screen now. All too happy to match it and just say, come at us. You've got the Ornhorn. You've got the Swain team fighting. Skarner to get the picks. They will meet you in the middle, and they will take you on. They absolutely will. And as it is, we load onto the rift for game four between BLG and Rogue Warriors. Crowd still warming up for BLG, getting louder every time as they get closer to finishing off this series. Still defensive lines from the teams to start things off. And as we get into oh, this, we have to not? look to the senior members of the team to help provide that emotional support, that emotional bastion that the team needs. Amazing J and Doinby, the heartbeats of these two. And of course, as you do when you come into a game with a Skarner on the Rift, you share the gold. Everybody gets 15 if you're standing on those little mm. Dominion outposts. That's what I call them for some reason. It's just easier than Spires, which it isn't. But we are going to be starting once again the exact same side of the rift as every other game. Chieftain and Flawless go top to bottom. But this last game, Chieftain had the counterplay. <clears throat> last game, Chieftain was there and Mole was also able and willing to help. And they get the advantage over Flawless. But last game, it was a Lee Sin. This time around, it's a Sejuani. And the reason that I like Sejuani, and I finally have the opportunity to talk about it, <laughs> is you can't duel Sejuani. Even though she's a tank, she wins the skirmish. There is no real way to navigate around that, so you try and farm instead. You try and get level 4. You try and push that lead. But often, Sejuani will just come towards you because she has superior scuttle crab control. Yeah. So that's where we're going to have to continue to watch. They're both part of the same side of the map. They may meet. In the last game, we also did see feigned leashes from BLG to try and further upset the style. Sorry, that was two two games ago. This time, 
as we get deeper into the series, it's oh, all about that safe standard play. Mole's gone towards Gathering Storm and, of course, the expanding mind. Yeah. He wants that late game. BLG definitely do take it too late game unless they've started a heavy snowball. Lately, they've been a little bit faster with their average game time. They have. Still the same consistent BLG is there, that Miracle Maker team that you always discuss them. Well, having. they've already shown that they can play the late game. I mean, that was the 57-minute game, too, where it came down to a single mistake from Chieftain. Now that they've got some momentum with that game three win, perhaps they'll be more incentivized to play that style, though. Chieftain. Oh, I mean, does, flawless does he spot sees him. him. There? Yeah, Flawless does see this. Does Chieftain see Flawless, though? He's just outside of the vision. And yeah, we'll clear oh, out, out this played. ward. One, two wards. Wow, that's some value. Yeah, third one gets placed by Chieftain just before going back to base in the ward, in the bush where there is already a ward from Rogue Warrior. Uh -huh. So even that has been spotted. Chieftain now has no vision control available. And if he wanted to, Rogue Warriors, they could start placing vision towards the top side of the rift. Of course, the Raptor camp and the red buff will be the, that side of the map spawns first. So get a ward at the Raptors, perhaps meet him there. Very well could. No Raptors there quite yet. Flawless is pretty low health too. As Mouse is suffering in this trade against Amazing J. You can see he did take fleet footwork. There's a reason Orn has been banned all series. Doombi's actually navigated the early stages of this lane quite well also. Swain ramps up super hard as you get levels more than just the items. So starting the game off, picking the Swain into the Galio definitely is not for level one laning. Though having the Eldritch Blast helps out quite a bit for poking. It's more so what happens once you get those first and second recalls more importantly off. If there's no Negatron Cloak or anything of the likes there for doing B, then it does start to shift in Mole's favor. Even going for the Dark Seal for more sustain with that refillable as, oop, never move, will catch him and yank him back in. Mole with that unsealed spellbook, you mentioned that he could teleport right back. That's the first recall, though. We do have Doinby getting his own just a bit faster. Bottom lane in control from SMLZ and Killua. More than just in control, you're starting to see a CS differential start to crop up here in favor of Rogue Warriors in the 2v2, something that was sorely missing in that third game with yeah. the Cogmore choice. But this time around, the Jin selection has helped them do a little bit more work, much more in the direction you would want to be seeing from Rogue Warriors in the 2v2 that is their most successful outlet to victory. Mm -hmm. SMLZ, always the carry of Rogue Warriors. And while Doinby might be the heartbeat, SMLZ is the active limbs that finishes it off. Though we have seen Doinby finish games off on his own, typically with that Cassiopeia. Flawless is enabling this, though, with a quick invade that I believe he spotted out Chieftain with that Spire team. Yeah, he did. Also, I feel like you could just call him the uppercut, not an active limb. Oh, yeah. That's I a good feel one, too. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess SMLZ is more the haymaker. He's the long wind-up into whoop -ah. The Hercules punch. Yeah, that's the one. I imagine it would have some sort of cool anime name, but that's BLG, or the anime network. Rogue Warriors is a cool enough name as it yeah, is. It just really know is. That yeah, it really is. Rogue Warriors have got SMLZ, and he is that late game carry <laughs> for the team. But at level 6 is also a place you have to look towards with the rest of their composition, not just the bottom lane that scales a little bit. One item, two item places to be excited for for Rogue Warriors, but also when Doinby is unlocked and, and yeah. free to move and work with Flawless. Ooh, Mouse actually got caught there. Brittle will hit him. Down to 200 health, the flash auto. Amazing J, first blood solo kills Mouse. And that's just a mechanical misplay from Mouse as well. Super well done from Amazing J, capitalizing on it the second the mistake happens, going forwards, securing the kill pretty much for free, just in the 1v1. But Mouse jumps late. Mouse flashes late, does not respect the Orn at all, and just dies for it when he should not have. Massive mistake in that top lane as Mouse just gives over quite a bit of gold to Amazing J. And look at the armor that he's immediately built up. Any way for Mouse to get back into the lane has suddenly just become a lot more difficult. Now that is pretty much lane changing. If an Orn gets a lead such as the one he has right now, then he walks back in the lane, controls the Nar, pushes the Nar in, and suddenly there's nothing that you can do as Mouse. You have to look towards teleports, but he has to teleport to lane because he died and was losing minions. It's just a massive advantage to BLG. That does mean Chieftain doesn't quite have to worry about going to that top half of the map so much unless he wants to try and snowball that Orn. And here it is again. He catches him with the pillar off the back. Mouse leaps. Yeah, Mouse wants to get the cannon before going back, but of course, that's the max range on that AoE. Mouse could jump now. He chooses to jump after getting hit by it, yeah. and then flashes afterwards as well. And instead of just queuing and running away, 
He cues and autos. Yes. Hoping perhaps that the fleet footwork would give him health, but that gives range to Amazing J to get an auto attack off. That's three individual things that could have been done better for Mouse in that 1v1. And to be fair, we don't credit Mouse as an amazing laner. Yes. It's his team fights on that NAR SMLZ. Come on, man. You got to stop trust falling like this. Someday, Killua won't be there to save you, and that's where we ask the question. I don't really think that there will ever be a day where Kalua is not there to rescue him with the way that SMLZ consistently plays Every like this. Every time, yeah. He's training into him at this point. If, if Kalua ever plays with another uh, AD carry, you would probably consider this playstyle a bit overbearing. Yeah, just every single time I'm like last hitting or hitting a champion, I'm saved me. by yeah. him. It's a bit much. <laughs> Overwhelming amounts of support seen from Kalua. He's had a fantastic split for himself so far as well. Yes. The fact that he is a rookie coming into the playoffs and still able to navigate team fights. No nerves to be seen from him. Mm -hmm. Excellent performance from Rogue Warriors as a whole, if you exclude their last few weeks of play. But still, this game is nice and slow. Still just skirmishing over vision that Skarner wants to try and control the river. Yeah, we're at a point now where level 6 is available, where ultimates are available. There is a one-level lead for Chieftain. Over Flawless as well, something that isn't going to be a significant amount of experience, but is starting to bleed over in control of the map, in tempo of the jungle, and now going towards objectives. Flawless will spot this. He's also spotted he can stop it. the Ward of Chieftain, who just steps forward. Dragon is pulled out of the pit, and yeah, it looks like BLG decided to play it safe and back out. Yeah, very well done from Rogue Warriors to be able to stop it. Also just jumping over there to see if they were around. Jumps back out. It's about vision control. That was where I was going to go before the dragon <laughs> did actually get started. But once you've hit level six and you've got a Skarner in the composition, you need to be able to stop the Skarner from being able to predator and run at you. You need to be able to see him before he starts the sprint. Usually it's too late by that stage. So a big goal of the Rogue Warriors now is just slightly deeper vision than very neutral placements. You can see that one just placed by Kilua is a great example of it. You need to know that he's coming, not that he's already there. Like the old Evelyn tracking method. You don't place wards at the traditional gank routes. You place wards at the jungle camps to see which side of the map Evelyn is on and evaluate your decision making from then. Skarner very similar in that regard. Simply because of his move speed, of course, not the invisibility, but yeah. absolutely. You have to shift and change your focus as it goes. This is also that point where mid lane gets control from BLG, especially having the blue buff. So really the inside track and control of any side of the map that BLG choose does belong to them. Yeah. It seems to be that top side of the map right now. There's actually a ping onto the Rift Herald, and Flawless, maybe he thinks something up is, is, is up right now. He can't quite make up his mind, Doinby. Ooh, decides not to go for the Flash Engage onto Mole. Amazing Jay is actually backed out of lane. That's Rift Herald as it spawns. That they Baron know. Gate Ward will spot this, but Doinby seems to be recalling right now. He's going to teleport back into the mid lane, but Chieftain is still working onto it. Flawless trying to catch up. He slams over the wall. It could be too little, too late. Oh, no, he's here perfectly health, in time. He's actually time. there, yeah. All right, the eye is open. Access Smite to the is eye. available for both. Amazing J is right there. It turns around. Where's the burst? It is going to be picked up by BLG. Now they're going to try and find the fight as Mouse joins in. They've locked down Chieftain, and they have got enough to kill him. But Mole joins the Mole. fight. Flawless is low. He dashes away, but Mole chases. That's the knockup. One for one so far. Here's the extended fight. Amazing J with more stats is turning on to Mouse. The selection is clean and BLG get two kills for one. And BLG just navigate the fight excellently. Everything was thrown towards Chieftain trying to kill him, but because everything was thrown at him, you don't forget about Amazing J, you don't forget about Mole, and they just hit everybody with all of the spells. The target selection was fantastic. That target changing as well on a whim was also great. So they get themselves the trade upwards, and they even get themselves the Rift Herald to boot. Mm -hmm. Picked up in the mid lane by Mole as he completes his recall and teleports back into the mid lane with a very early Rod of Ages. And he's even building some magic resist to deal with Doinby's Galio. Here that is again. There was a chance that Flawless could have dashed forwards there, even maybe gone for the Ice Smite at the same time, and he could have secured that one. But again, you see the Nar ultimate used, the Sejuani ultimate, the Flash Taunt. That's every form of crowd control gone. And then suddenly Amazing J can hit all of them with the ultimate. They can follow it up in Mole. Of course, flashing forwards. Knows how much damage he's able to output without having to pop the ultimate. And Mouse is the second to follow, just overextends themselves, trying to get the kill and maybe get away because it's a numbers advantage. But the two that were alive have crowd control. Mm -hmm. Turns out it was not, in fact, a numbers advantage when they lost a member of their uh, 
skirmish. That's now 1,600 gold to BLG very early on. And they haven't quite broken the game open just yet. Still very close to even. Just about everywhere, except for Amazing J in that top lane, who's getting even bigger. In case you were wondering, it is a Glacial Augment. Tom Kench this time around is into the Brawl matchup, so he knows that he wants to keep close and keep up. Close the distance, especially on Desire as well, who's a low range AD carry, maybe force the ultimate out with that extra movement speed to close distance. We're actually seeing a, an advantage for SMLZ. He went straight for the Essence Reaver completion before Boots, yeah. whereas Jin Zhao decided to distribute his gold a little bit more evenly. Uh, I mean, we still have to go towards supports when we look oh, yeah. at this. Why would you rush a full Essence Reaver without going towards Boots? Well, you want to maximize your damage output once again. And you if SMLZ could choose, he yeah. probably would never build Boots unless they helped him to kill something quicker. Mm. But Kalua's also rushed to QSS. So knowing full well the state of this game at the moment is that Kalua is going to save SMLZ. If that means that the Braum will be engaging, then Chieftain would be finding Kalua. So. Ooh, Road is the target. Instant cleanse out of the Glacial Storm. Chieftain was there, but with Doin B shadowing outside of that mid lane, it would have been a close skirmish between the two. They just didn't do their tab checks this time around. BLG, they've got the cleanse on the Braum, so the cleanse is gone now. But also so is the Sejuani ultimate. So there's now an opportunity for BLG to perhaps once again look towards that bottom lane, knowing that Sejuani cannot contribute an extensive amount if they have the 3v3 skirmishes or engages. And still the vision control belongs to BLG. That is yeah. the number one thing that you have to note. Look at the river around the mountain drake. They see everything that's going on over there. Except for the one ward behind the dragon. And they can't quite see why kids love the taste of cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> um, but they're still going is to try grouping American? up around the pit. <laughs> it is. Have you, have you never heard that? No, no not once. Okay, all right. Not once. <laughs> Uh-oh, Flawless has found Chieftain. He has no flash, and oh, there is no caught. blast cone. Chieftain, what are you doing there? He just goes down. He I have no idea a kill. what he was doing there. Yeah. What is that man doing there? That's <laughs> odd. <laughs> Rift Herald used in the mid lane. Flawless is spotted and eats a bit of damage, though he will stagger it out and smack the eye for some damage reduction. Ooh, and a preemptive smite yeah. to try and reduce it even more. Actually, pretty good stuff there from Flawless to ensure that he was there in time. Of what course, you do get the notification that it's summoned. <laughs> Having the smite as well as the eye hit, so reduces the damage onto the turret, keeps the lane prolonged, and the longer you can keep the mid lane out of turret, the better off you will be, of course. And that does get them to the level 11 point, relatively unscathed through the Swain that is starting to snowball as Ooh. teleports. Started and cancelled from both top laners. All right, guys, calm down. It's that's, only 15 minutes in. That's actually a win, though, from Rogue Warriors if they can disengage from this situation. Rode managed to hit the knockup onto Doinby. He doesn't have Flash. Impale pulls him back in. He gets a taunt onto four, saved by Killua, who tries to retreat. Doinby takes to the skies. That's a knockup, but he's still got no health. Backs away, but dies to Mole. It's a one-for-one -one trade, though, as Chieftain does go down, and Killua will die to Jin Zhao. Looks like it's going to be it. Mole actually threatening for the dive. He's not going to have the range to follow it through and get the kill. The end result, still that Rogue Warriors lose the trade. The BLG get two kills on the Jin Zhao, and now they threaten a turret as well. Yeah, BLG have got turret push in two lanes. Amazing J is pushing mid, while Jin Zhao, Rode, and Mole push bottom. And Mouse will be there to defend, but that is a one fight by a BLG. And they're trying to turn it into first brick. There's no one to defend. It'll happen. They're even kind enough to give that solo gold over to their AD carry. Yeah, fantastic stuff from BLG, winning the trade, being able to translate that trade into the objective and ensuring the solo gold goes over. Now, Rogue Warriors are caught well out of position right now, dragged even further into the fight. Doing B. Whilst he gets devoured by Kalua, I still probably would have left my mid laner to die in this situation and tried to just disengage. A kill does go over, so they try and take the fight, they try and trade, and I think a lot of this mentality from them is that it was a 4v4 and Orn is stronger than Nah. Hmm. So if we take a fairly equal strength 4v4, then it may be okay. But they overreached themselves. Mole is having a good showing on Swain just as much as he has on his Talia and his Zoe in the past couple of games. He's really ramping up. He certainly is. Finding the Impale onto the flashless Doinbee to pull him in. Now Mountain Dragon has been started by BLG. Amazing J is already down there. There's a ping up top to look for the top tier one, but Rogue Warriors, 
They're starting to lose neutral objectives in this series. We talked about what happens when BLG starts to get going. Well, Rusty, they're getting going. Definitely our momentum from Game 3 seems to be transitioning over to Game 4 just that little bit here to give them the lead, give them the advantage, and now they go mid lane as well. Doinbe should have enough wave clear to hold this one, but it is getting a stone throw away from actually dropping, and they don't even get top lane Rogue Warriors. They get nothing from that. Not a single turret, barely a kill after that extended fight. Not even a huge amount of chip damage onto the top tier one. Recall will be completed, but now this is BLG. We know they're good at taking these early advantages. Now they just need to propel them and snowball them a little bit more aggressively. They were able to do it in game three. That took them to a 25 minute win. That's seven minutes away from now. And while it's not as accelerated, there's still plenty of potential for this game to blow wide open. Yeah, nowhere near as accelerated. In fact, Rogue Warriors are still in a far better position in this fourth game for certain. They've got a strong Jin. SMLZ is very large, and he does have the range of the Rapid Fire Cannon now that it's completed to poke people's health bars down. And it's actually very difficult to siege against the Jin when he can do things like that too. You know, hit the fourth bullet off the minions, get the crit ready, and then Rapid Fire Cannon proc you straight in the face. Half health's a lot of carries. And Zaya can't necessarily step up to structures or objectives to take them down. So sieging is nearly impossible for BLG now that they've got the lead. They need to get the kills first. They need Chieftain to generate those picks or Amazing J even to come in with the flank on the Orn to kick it all off for them. Otherwise, the neutral objectives will still belong to BLG. It's just those structures. And I do now want to bring up the fact that that Orn is 2-0-1. And Jin has never exactly been terrifically... Uh, uh, well known for his tank shredding capabilities. Could that perhaps be an issue for Rogue Warriors if they're able to stall out this game long enough that yes, Jin will be able to do good damage against the Zaya and maybe even the Swain, but Amazing J could become a problem? Yeah, I mean, it's an issue now. It's not something oh, yeah, that okay. could become an issue. It, <laughs> it just is, is an, an ever-present issue because <laughs> that Ornn is so well, large. there you go. Chieftain also going towards armor a little bit sooner in his itemization, of course, wants the righteous glory to be seen. So even then, I mean, SMLZ is going to do a lot of damage specifically to carries, but the tanks are still the tanks that will stand in front, and Braum even helps his carry survive very well. And BLG have got a strong draft right now, and Rogue Warriors, with their one major point of strength being their AD carry, have still got a little way to go with their scaling. We'll see if they have enough time to make that last, because right now, Doinby is in base. And he's holding on to that teleport. Mid-tier one is very they low just, health. They don't have vision to make plays. They, they yeah. can't. Look at how the transition of vision has gone from bottom river to top river around the Baron. BLG are just in absolute control. And there's nothing Rogue Warriors can do for that vision if they're stuck in base looking for teleports or they're forced to recall or yeah. they're forced to constantly be the second to get somewhere. Just constantly stepping backwards and forwards, trying to dance around BLG's ever-present presence on this side of the map. Even Amazing J has been pulled up towards the mid lane. There's a ping towards Doinby, but Flawless is just off the side. That means Mouse has got some time to push bottom. Maybe he can try to equalize by taking a turret. But you know what does help in a losing game, Dom, is having a Sejuani. Oh, yeah. Having a tank that is just naturally going to be strong from her passive, has a ranged engage tool, and isn't a Lee Sin. So they are very well equipped to actually come back from a deficit this time around Rogue Warriors compared to the third. But BLG still pretty much with a comprehensive shutout of any semblance of control mm -hmm. whatsoever. Are still controlling the state of the map incredibly well. It's just about snowballing that step for them. But again, outer turrets are easy to take. It's the inners that are difficult. So there's one outer left naturally. Yeah. That's where they'll go. Both that top and that mid, though mid is very low and... Jinjiao and Rhodes set to finish off top. They finally break it down. Flawless just over the side, but he's got to compete with Chieftain, who's outside of vision on the other direction. Finally, mid-tier one will be broken. And Killua, he's going to be skirmishing with Chieftain as Flawless trades out with Road. That's a knock-up. As Mouse joins up just to get Blast Coned back. That he's is got so Meganar, actually. Road doesn't have Flash. You need to be careful. Everyone needs to be careful. This is very awkward trading, oh, yeah. honestly, across the board. I have barely seen SMLZ. He's just trying to stay as healthy as he possibly can. Road doesn't have summoners. Needed to back away. But at the same time as all of that trading happening, Kalua was dealing with Chieftain, and then everyone starts to slowly trickle into the fight and just cascade forwards. 
nothing actually happens besides the turrets going down. So literally nothing happens but BLG winning the game more. Yeah, you can see Amazing J in his player cam, the captain of the team. We've got to talk about the experience that this guy brings. Again, taking his team to Worlds in 2016, how he has grown in leading this team and how this team has changed as a result of it. No longer are they just the late game team fight, 50-50 coin flip team. No longer are they just the Miracle Makers. They're actually playing an early game. They're actually playing aggressive pressure style of play. It means they're doing it without Amazing Jade. Yeah. That's the thing. If they have an early game, they're not relying on their top laner to tell them where to be. They have got some independence and they are doing some work themselves. And it's not just him that is an experienced member of the roster. You've got Jin Zhao and Rode. Absolutely. They also went to Worlds. They also represented the LPL on international stages. They know what it means to come into important moments and come out victorious. They were a part of the miracle when it first happened. Nope. They are all able to do it without their leader during the early game. Yeah. No longer can we call Aimee or Billy, uh, BLG the little brother team. This is the brother growing up. We're seeing the evolution of this roster into something bigger, stronger, and better. The question is, where does that end up for this team? Do they advance to play their own big brother of EDG in the next round by closing out the series against Rogue Warriors? Or do they fall prey to SMLZ and Doinbee? Now, Dragon has just spawned. You can see it's been started. Mole in the front. The, the is out. breaks out. SMLZ is knocked up. He's already very low health. Kill off force no. to flash away. Mouse goes in. Look at the stun. Look at the AoE. He's trading it across, but Amazing J has found the backline. Kill off saves him, but spits him right out next to the support, trying to keep him alive as it's just constant fighting on two fronts. Doinby goes low. Mole will catch him with another kill as SMLZ retreats from Amazing J. And that's Rogue Warriors going down two members to only one. One of BLG. The fact that they lose that fight with the execution between Mouse and Doinby is honestly surprising. They hit so many members, they had a combo, but no one's there to protect SMLZ but Kalua. No one is able to kill the tanks but SMLZ, and that takes so long to do. BLG, they are able to still win the team fight in the end. They get the objective in the end as well, and we have to see what happens here because it starts with the horn being sounded at the same time as a Sejuani. And SMLZ survives through all of this, but Mouse wow. starts it in the back line so well with Doin B and Flawless. But remember that they're just tanks. You know, this early into the game, Doin B doesn't have enough AP to one-hit someone when he lands. And so this game just persists, the fight persists, and the consistent damage that Mole has got is enough. And it absolutely pays off this time. 4,000 gold advantage for BLG. Two dragons to zero, three turrets to zero. Slowly but surely. This rolling golem is getting some speed. And Rogue Warriors just giving up more and more ground with each of these fights that they try and take. Yes, they're getting some core itemization now, but is it enough? They're five near, excuse me, four and a half thousand gold back. Yeah, we're waiting for SMLZ to finish the Infinity Edge, presumably, of course, oh, yeah. before they actually try and start some bigger fights themselves. One place that you have to direct your attention towards is the consistent itemization choices out of Join Me. He's gone towards a Sorelia's Reverie once again. I, just, I feel like in a game like this, when you've got to shred tanks, get a Leandri second. Yeah. You know, like go towards a more efficient AP build. You do not need the utility of a Sorelia's at all. I mean, we've always known Doinby to be, to be particularly creative in his I just think builds. He's, it's too stuck in his ways with this choice. It uh -huh. has to be scaling damage. Leandre's to amplify your damage. Death cap third if you need to go AP immediately. Not quite sure what he's thinking with his Shirelia's Reverie. Perhaps looking to find someone out of position. He's got Teleport, which means that he can split push in a side lane right now. But there are pings onto the Baron, and BLG are just baiting it. This isn't a 4-1 versus a 4-1. This is a 5v5, but Mole is the target. That said, there's an arrow pointing right at SMLZ. Still, they come to defend Mole instead of killing the carry. That's how committed they are. Doinby enters the fight with a huge knockup, but look at the slam again. Mouse separated from his team, finally will die. Killua Low dies again. A double kill, as now it's Flawless and Doinby trying to defend, but they've given up so much. BLG are doing it once again with the team fights. It looks like Mole's caught out of position, but he ends the fight with full health. Now they just go straight back over to the Baron buff. Mouse dead, SMLZ and Kalua gone. Nothing left to stop them from doing the Baron besides a steal. And even that is but a pipe dream for the side of Rogue Warriors. This should just be gone. Already you can see Rode stepping forward to zone away that Sejuani. No chance. As Baron has picked up 27 minutes, Rusty, BLG have got their eyes on that game five.
And you can see what they were trying to do in the last fight as well. They thought that Mole was caught out of position, but firstly, he has a Zonia's Hourglass, and secondly, he's able to get the ultimate off before he even uses that. He's tanky, and they get to a choke point. They, co they get collapsed on by BLG, who are fully prepared for it. And even if Mouse, once again, hits multiple people with the ultimate, even if Doin B hits a four-person taunt, it doesn't mean they can win a team fight anymore. In fact, they're pretty Jeez. much useless in the 5v5 team fight. This is one of those moments where they've drafted not to kill the tanks, but they've fallen behind and there are still tanks in front of them. Yeah. The burst damage from that massive AP from Mole getting the full Demonic Ascension cast off. And now he's upgraded off that Zanya's Paradox from Amazing J. This is a very, very big swing. Four, zero, and five. Amazing J still holding down the fort with his finished off Warmogs. And Jin Zhao's up to three items too. Still no Infinity Edge completed from SMLZ. And now that BLG have got that Baron buff, they're going to start setting up a siege in multiple lanes. AJ has teleport. And you know, even with the Infinity Edge done now at this stage, it's nearly impossible that he can oh, even yeah. get through Mole's health. So it's just Jin Zhao. The only person that he can realistically kill is Jin Zhao. That's not even going to be easy to do when zai has got the ultimate available. Rogue Warrior is more than just on the back foot now. Complete disarray. First wave crashes as Mouse is forced to recall and try to defend against Amazing J mid. It's actually Doinby who heads over to hold that down, but Mole simply heads up to make it even more threatening. And still SMLZ looking for chip damage, looking for a way in, looking for an opportunity, but Killua pulls him back. The seed should continue on the bottom lane. They should be actually continuing to pressure the 2-3. Glacial Storm misses. Flawless tries to force the fight. That's the ultimate. He goes too far forward. He's pulled away. Chieftain helps lock down the kill. Doinby joins in, but AJ and Mole walk through to head Rogue Warriors off at their own turret. They are denied the ability to escape. It's a double kill as Doinby is dead. SMLZ escapes the visions of Empire, but that does not mean that Killua can escape with his own life. Three members dead and Baron for 70 seconds. Super hard force out of Rogue Warriors, trying to get anything from it. SMLZ does not have any damage, not enough to secure a kill, and both inhibs should just drop BLG. They have an opportunity to end the game right now if they choose to. 29 and a half minutes. Mouse is pulled forward. SMLZ steps up to try and defend, but he's right next to that pillar from Amazing J. The first Nexus turret has fallen. The second is being rushed down. There's no sign of a defense from Rogue Warriors. Rusty, I cannot believe it. BLG are bringing us to a game five. Once that steam train starts rolling, BLG cannot be stopped. And in that third game, it starts the momentum. A 25 minute victory. Now they come into the fourth. They get that smallest advantage. The rest of the game follows. And now they're smiles, now they're chipping, now they're happy. Rogue Warriors, two back-to-back -back defeats. Yeah. On the cusp of being reverse swept because their own hubris gets the better of them in the Game 3 draft. We know they're, emo they're an emotional team. We have yet to see concrete footage of them bouncing back in a series able to recenter themselves and turn momentum around. And now they're up against one of the most momentum heavy teams in the LPL in game five, a 30 minute game four win and BLG are coming online. I do think there were some improvements across the board here from both of these teams. Firstly, the Sejuani exists and that just makes me happy to see that there was adaptation from them in the draft. But we have an Orn for Amazing J this time around. He went for the third pick of the Orn as well before it gets banned. And they choose to have a mismatch bottom lane. They don't go for the Lovers duo, but they pick the earlier Zaya again, denying that one from SMLZ. He looked good on the Jin. Once again, he's still a fine Jin player. The rest of the composition from Rogue Warriors is where I have my concerns. The oh, yeah. choice of the Galio is the one that really comes to mind. It could be a Cassiopeia. It could be something that is actually designed to shred tanks, but they opt out of that for the Galio. And this is where we look at Rogue Warriors hubris, perhaps once again coming back to bite them. Is it enough, though? I pose the question to you, both the viewer and the analyst desks who are about to break down this game for. Thanks, Tom. Is it enough? Well, currently, from what we're seeing from BLG, honestly, like Amazing J said it best himself, we can make miracles happen. And right now, we're going to game five. So I'm probably going to say yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. And apparently, he posed us the question of, you know, what's going to happen in game five. Seems like BLG, he's correct. Online, compositions make sense. 
I don't know what to say. It feels like BLG coming in strong. It may have taken a long time, Frosk, but it seems like they might be able to take this one. Yeah, I'm still tilted from game number one to <laughs> game number two. I don't know if I'm ever going to recover from that. But finally, we were actually seeing BLG show up. So this is finally Rogue Warriors versus BLG. And I want to jump right into the compositions. Yeah. And I want to start with the Sejuani. Because while I agree with Rusty, I was like, yes! Where is the Sejuani? Raz, you and I were talking about this. We're like, something must have happened in scrims. Like, it's the only reason why you get these weird priority picks, why we've been going so hard into the Rek'Sai, while it took so long for Sejuani to appear. And in this composition specifically, the Sej comes out and immediately BLG closed the door on it because they have Skarner and they have Swain. And one of the strongest things about Sejuani is actually her burst potential. This is 8.6, the massive changes haven't come in, and her burst potential at level 6 around the Scuttle Crab skirmish is really high. We see it all the time. She always loves to go towards the, the mid lane. She catches someone out at level 6. She throws the ultimate and you just pop them like a balloon. With the Skarn or Swain, you cannot do that. So suddenly Sejuani only has the option to go towards the bot lane. And how is she supposed to gank a Zaya lane? I just think it was a great read on BLG. And now I finally understand this is why the teams were hesitant to grab this edge. Yeah, we saw her get completely outpaced in the jungle and then that actually turned into something tangible when it came to these team fights. This is something you know, a BLG special. This time around, Mold being able to pick up the Swain. Swain was a massive deal here just because what are you going to do if you're Rogue, Rogue Warriors? If you fully commit to the fight, you're walking into Swain ulti, they're not going to be able to do that. So this is once again another game where BLG have full dragon side priority and they're able to take these team fights handily. Yeah, and it pretty much just came to that, like, in the fights once again. But this is also BLG getting to those fights either even or ahead. It seems like the early game has been completely cleaned up from them. Which goes back to Frost's point about the jungle factor, because Sidwani realized that she couldn't do anything in terms of early game impact. She had to farm it up. And if you're Skarner, you're going up to your Krugs, you're taking your Raptors, you're challenging enemy Raptors. She's already, like, two levels behind at that point. Yeah, so she's Four really struggling. Level seven. It was ridiculous. He had just turned level five, didn't have access to his ultimate. Skarner's already level seven. It then it, it seems like such a small thing, but it completely disrupts tempo because where Sejuani had the level six, where Galio is level six, she wants her level six, they want to go down bottom and use their level six because it's the only play they have available. They can't burst the mid lane. Suddenly, being that level four, she has to do uh, an extra, like what, two camps to find yeah. her ultimate. It stalls it out by 30 seconds a minute. Suddenly, the mid wave's not prepped and everything falls into disarray. And look, it wouldn't be this bad for the Sejuani if she had a topside response just because Sejuani. Galio, sure, not a lot of skirmishing potential there. You're going to get caught out. You're going to lose a lot in that. But they look towards topside because Mouse is their one point of damage. They can win in a topside skirmish. The real issue here that we didn't really mention, it was of course mentioned on the cast, is that Mouse got solo killed <laughs> in a proper matchup for him. Yep, messed and it up twice. Exactly. Yeah. And then he immediately goes into the pre next fight and he dies in that one. So he's actually incredibly far behind at this point in terms of itemizing. Actually itemizes towards the cowl instead of the frozen mallet. So he doesn't have his damage at that point in the game. So they have to stall back into two options. Either get Infinity Edge into Jin so they have reasonable damage on the bottom side of the map. Or wait until you have two offensive items on the NAR so he can start to split push, and it took a long time for them to be comfortable. And theoretically, it should be okay for them to stall out because they do have an abundance of wave clears so that they are looking for mounts to be relevant to a side lane. So they are waiting for Jin to scale up so they can match 5v5. But Rogue Warriors actually take the team fights. You know, it was multiple times that the NAR was finding these incredible NAR yeah. ultimates, but their composition didn't have the damage online for any of the follow up. So Rogue Warriors. Why are you doing this? Why are you contesting for these objectives? Why are you contesting for this vision if your win conditions are that you can't win a fight for another, you know, 10 minutes? Outplay potential. You could see what they were trying to do there, being able to tr pick out Jin Zhao. Jin Zhao was just on point to be able to flash out of that one immediately. And honestly, Amazing J played that out pr perfectly just yeah. because even though the NAR ultimate comes through, Amazing J just immediately points out towards yep. SMLZ so it doesn't have any point of damage in that team fight. But at a certain point, you can't just fight your way out of every single situation. You know, it's not just a bar brawl. Like, I see, Sounds like, like RNG are just like trying to get out of that. Like these are the type of Have teams which will try and try, <laughs> try and fight, right? But don't piss because me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like this is a major problem now for Rogue Warriors heading into Game Five. It seems like BLG their final form just seems straight up better than what Rogue Warriors have because we saw that coming out of the gate. Do you think that's true? When it's coming down to execution. Uh 
BLG stumbled completely through execution of the first two games. Now they're starting to execute better, but this is the thing. Like, when both these teams are playing their identity, I still give the edge to BLG, but you still have that X factor from Rogue Warriors. And so this comes back to the discussion we had going into game one. Pre-desk, we'd had a discussion of Rogue Warriors needing to clean up their bottom side vision control yep. and playing through mid lane so they don't lose out in mid lane. This feels like, once again, we're now in a best of one scenario because they're reset. BLG's mentality is reset. They don't have the nonsense of game one to game two. And of course, Rogue Warriors need to reset and figure out what has been going wrong. My biggest problem is actually Doinby. And I want to echo what you said at the very top of the day. I want to see the Cassiopeia. I want to see the Oriana. I want the Rise. I yes. feel like they're actually collapsing in the mid lane and they're not empowering Flawless. Like he grabs a pick like Sejuani. He needs his mid laner to have teeth so they have the damage output. If they continue to play this secondary support style where he's just on the primary engage, their bot lane is collapsing before yep. it gets time to scale up. BLG have got the read on yep. them and they're blitzing. You're absolutely right. It's happening in the early game before they can even get to those team fights. And a large proponent of that is BLG looking at the mid lane, looking at the jungle. Mo will take the MVP in this one once again. Yeah, Mo, fantastic. When he's on point, he comes out big. Of course, Swain, an amazing champion to do so. If you if you get a massive lead for yourself, you can just pretty much turn your ultimate on and walk up forward. Because at that point, you can't fight into it. So heading into this fifth and final game, I'm gonna wipe the slate clean, uh -oh. wipe the wipe the predictions off the board. The redo. <laughs> Who is gonna take it, Raz? <laughs> Well, I already voted for Rogue Warriors because I thought they could come through in it, and I think that's going to be the case here. Wow, you're still going to stay with I'm gonna them? I'm going to have to. Normally, okay. this guy flip-flops all the time. Yeah, I'm, he's committing. I'm still going to stay I'm with BLG. Ship. I did predict 3 at the beginning of the day. I was tilted off the face of the planet after the this first two games, but I have finally seen BLG return. These last uh, two series have been BLG playing BLG style as long as they continue to do that for game number five. All right, we're both committing to this one. But either way, we are going to send to a quick break before we get to this fifth and final game.